So what we're working on today is creating the scenery for the game. Um, this, as we talked about on Tuesday, is everything in the game that the player doesn't actually like interact with. So it's not like obstacles or items or you know NPCs, stuff like that. Um, it's everything that we just see in the game uh, that communicates to us like the setting of the game, where the world it takes place in. Uh, it may communicate some various aspects of like the functionality of the game that we might expect. Uh, but mostly it's just like the visual design. It kind of situates, uh, situates us within the world. It communicates things like, is there gravity? Are we in space? Are we on the ground? Are we underwater? Uh, all these different things uh, related to setting. Um, so what we have now, like when I run the game, it doesn't look like anything's happening because even though I'm like moving my little cat guy around, uh, there's no scenery. So we have no like perspective. We have no like reference for where we are in the game. Um, so we're gonna start building that now. On Tuesday, I created two uh, sprite sheets. Uh, my, let's open up my uh, file system real quick. Uh, why is this so small? Okay. Uh, I created a couple sprite sheets and I really didn't spend a lot of time on these just for the demo. I just wanted some something to use. So I created these little sprite sheets with a basic grass texture, a basic uh, dirt texture, and a few water textures. And then I made some scenery. I made some trees, uh, some really beautiful trees. And I made some rocks and some grass and some flowers to put into the, into the world. Um, so I have these here in my Godot setup. And what we're going to do with the tile map is we're basically going to take those images and break them up into little squares and then use the tile map to tell Godot where to paint all of those different uh, images into our scene. Um, this process is like kind of challenging because there's a lot of different settings that you have to be aware of. Um, but uh, we'll try to make sure we cover everything that we need to do. So uh, to get started with this, I want to select the main node in my Godot scene. Uh, so this is the top node in the scene hierarchy all the way up here. This is usually going to be called like level one or my scene or something like that. Um, so I'm not going to add this to the player. Uh, it's going to be on the same level as the player. So once I select that node, I can click on this plus button, which I'm going to be using a lot when I'm creating my game to add different components. And then I can search for a component called a tile map. And the tile map is this big piece of information that knows where to find the images and knows how to cut them up and knows where we want them to go in our scene. So I'm going to click on tile map and click create. And you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to leave the name as tile map. Uh, you don't really have to put it above the player, but I usually like to have my player down here. And we just want to make sure that it's not inside the player. So like the camera is inside of the player. And we also want to make sure that the player is not inside the tile map. Some people do that, but we, we don't need to do that. So when I click on the tile map, it should be connected to level one, just like the player is connected to level one. So when we first open the tile map, we don't have anything in here. Um, sort of like when we created the animated sprite, we have to actually like create the resource first. And so that's, that's done over here in the inspector where it says tile set. We just click empty and we're gonna make a new tile set because we've never made one before. So we're gonna click here and our tile set is sort of like our main uh, thing that saves all this information about where we wanna paint our setting. Um, and so it's actually quite complicated. There's a lot of different cool things that it can do. Uh, I'm only going to go over a few of them, but you can find like a lot of information both on the Godot website and on YouTube and other resources like that. Um, one thing that I want to go ahead and set before I do anything else is uh, actually I think oh uh, yeah I want to well okay. Um, I want to set some layers. So you may have multiple layers, and this is actually really nice because it used to be that you just had to make a lot of different tile maps. But with the new tile map system that came out with Godot 4, 
you can have different layers and you can name those layers. So it makes it a lot more clear what everything is doing. So my first layer, I'm gonna call the ground. And so this will just be like those sort of like basic uh, color tiles that don't have a lot of detail in them. Um, and that's all I'm gonna do with that. I might set the Z index of the ground to negative one just to make sure it's behind everything. So remember the Z index is like the depth and our screen obviously doesn't have depth, but we're, we're sort of mimicking depth. So if the Z, most Z indexes are zero, that's just like one layer. If we set the Z index to negative one, that means it's like going back. So it'll be behind stuff on index zero. If we set it up to a higher value, it's gonna be coming towards us. So it's gonna be layered on top of uh, things that have a lower value. So for the ground, I'll set the Z index to negative one. We can always change this later. And then I'm gonna add one more layer. So I can click add element and I'm gonna call this layer scenery. This will be for like my trees and stuff, which I want to appear on top of the ground. Um, so I'm just gonna call that scenery. I'll leave the Z index as zero. And so now I'll have two layers to work with. You don't have to set this up first, but it makes it a little bit easier. We can choose which layer we put stuff on as we're creating it. So those are our layers. We'll come back here in a minute to add some other stuff. I think maybe, uh, we'll see, we'll see how far we go. Okay, so now uh, we can start to add our tiles, but we need to tell it where to get the, the uh, graphics from. And the way that I can do this is with this tile set option here. So when I click on my tile map, like if I click out of here and I'm like doing some stuff, when I click on the tile map, it'll default to the tile map, which is where I actually like draw my tiles on this on the uh, game window but I don't have a tile set yet so it doesn't have the images in there yet so I need to click on tile set here and create a new tile set um, this part is not super hard but we just have to do it first so we can put as many different images as we want into our tile set so we can either click the plus button here or I can just drag and drop so I have my sprites folder right here this isn't really working for some reason uh, but I can see I have tiles basic and tiles scenery. So I'm gonna drag tiles basic in here. It's gonna say the atlas uh, texture is modified. Would you like to create uh, tiles in the atlas? That basically means do I wanna add these tiles into like the tiles that I can use? I'm just gonna click yes. And there we get our base tiles. And I can already see that I've made a mistake because you can see these little squares don't match uh, the size of the actual art that I drew. You could just go ahead and use these as your tiles. That would be fine. Um, but I want to make sure that they match. So if you see something like this, where the orange lines don't really match the art that you make, um, then we need to set this uh, texture uh, region size here uh, to match the, re the size of the images that we made. So remember, on Tuesday, I mentioned a bunch of times that I was doing 32 by 32 pixel tiles. You don't have to do 32 by 32. The only thing that matters is that they have to be the same, what you made for your image versus what you set in here. 32 by 32 is good for like kind of a middle ground. 16 by 16 is obviously smaller, so you're gonna have to fill in more tiles. Uh, if you go larger, you know, you'll have less detail. So it's kind of a trade-off. Um, so I just have to change this to 32 by 32. And I probably have to, you can see that it doesn't really match. So I might have to um, do something. You know what, actually, I think I might have to set, I'm gonna delete this. So if I hit the trash can, it'll just get rid of what I've done so far. I think I might need to set this cell quadrant size. I don't know why this won't let me drag. Okay, let's set the cell quadrant size to 32. I think that will fix that issue. So then I'll click on the tile set again, throw this in here. Oh, okay, still doesn't do it right. 32 by 32. Um, hmm. Maybe I need to configure something up here. No, that's just the map. Uh, okay, maybe I'm missing a setting somewhere. Uh, let's delete this. Let's go back to our tile map. Okay. Uh, it's okay. That's okay. 
Okay, no problem. Um, all right, let's try that again. I'm gonna drag this in here. Say yes. Change this to 32 by 32. And why is this? Uh, okay, I'm gonna try this again. Sometimes Godot doesn't do exactly what you think it should. I'm just gonna do this again real quick. So I'm gonna try setting this first. Set this to 32, new tile set, drag this over, and then change 32 by 32. Oh man, why is this, what is going, okay, maybe, Oh, here it is, tile size. Okay, I didn't have this open. Okay, let's do that whole thing again. Okay, so when I click on the tile map and I create the new tile set, this is actually kind of annoying. Uh, let's drag this over. This is what I was missing, because when you click this, it like, for some reason it keeps changing the window size when I do this. This is like a Godot bug thing that's kind of annoying, but anyway. I have to actually click on this tile set. And now, if I set this to 32 by 32, this is the important one. The quadrant size doesn't matter. What matters is this uh, tile size. So now I've got that set to 32 by 32. And when I go to edit my tile set, now the tiles fit. OK, so that looks good. The tiles match the art that I made. So now I'm happy. And the default texture region size is going to be 32 by 32. So you don't have to mess with that. Okay, so with simple tiles like this, these are my tiles basic, that's pretty much all I have to do. Once I've added them here and uh, you know Godot recognizes where these tiles are, I can start to t paint my tiles into my scene. I'm gonna add some other stuff in a minute, but for now, we can just go over the most basic uh, like functionality of the tile map. So when I go back to tile map, and I have my tiles here. You can see the base tiles here. What I can do is I can select a tile and now I can just paint tiles wherever I want to. And then if I wanna change this, I can paint a different tile. Um, and then if I right click, I'll remove the tiles. Uh, oh, I, I have to recreate my layers real quick. Let's say ground, Z index negative one, and then uh, scenery. Okay, so I've got my ground layer. I can select that here. And uh, I can turn this like little grid on and off. Oops, I have to select this. Okay, I can turn this little like orange grid on and off if you don't like that. Um, and then you can also, this button will show you the layer that you're currently editing. Uh, so anyway, so I can draw these tiles and start to paint my scene. Uh, I can also, if I hold uh, Command or Shift, I can make like a line, like a straight line. And if I hold Command and Shift at the same time, I can make a big box. So I can start to design a little area for my player. So I could say this is kind of the grass area, and then maybe over here there's like a little dirt area. And then maybe over here there's like an ocean area. So you can t see these tiles are really, really basic. Uh, you know, it just kind of like, I probably normally these tiles would actually just be like a solid color, but if you only want to use like these really basic tiles, um, you can just use an image, add a little texture in there and that's fine. You can just go ahead and paint one tile at a time into whatever area you want to paint. Uh, and so now when I run my game, now my cat guy has a context. We can see he's on the grass and he's on some dirt, and he's in the ocean. Okay, so let's go over a couple things real quick with uh, more advanced editing, and then we'll keep going. So um, a couple things I can do is I can select multiple tiles at once. So if I select like all three of those tiles, now I can like make this like ocean thing. Let me zoom in a little bit, where like it's all three of my ocean tiles. That's kind of cool, but what's actually a little bit more useful is I can randomize. So if I click on this little dice, I can randomly choose one of these different tiles as I kind of like 
run around. So that's why I made three of those tiles. So it randomly chooses different versions so I can create a little bit of a more of a sense of like randomness and naturalness. Um, although it doesn't really look like it's working. Oh, they, yeah, it is. My tiles are just really, really similar looking. Um, so that's a useful thing to do. You can create some random tiles. You can also create patterns. It's not that useful with these sort of base tiles, uh, but we can go over that in a second. Let me make my ocean always random for a second. So I'm just holding con command and shift while I'm doing this. And then I'm drawing ar around a little bit there. Um, and then if I change this, the selection, I can like select groups of tiles. Let's say I wanted to like repeat something. Like I wanted to have a bunch of islands that looked exactly like this. I can make this selection and then I can go over to patterns here. And uh, I think I have to, I can make a selection, command C, copy, and then command V. Now I have this like island pattern that I can go back to the draw thing and uh, it's not letting me draw. Maybe that pattern is too big. Maybe I have to drag. Uh, I don't know why it's not letting me do that. I am getting like a million errors, but I don't think it's related. Uh, okay. Oops. Okay. All right, maybe I need to turn off random. There we go. Okay, so I have to turn off random before that works. Uh, but now I can make like big islands and I can like repeat. Obviously, I don't want all my islands to look exactly the same, but I could repeat these like really big patterns if I want to quickly make like a larger version of the world. And then I want to do some more ocean. So I'll go back here and grab these ocean parts and I'll just like fill this in. And now I've got a much larger world. Um, so you could make a few different patterns of different types of islands or different types of like platforms that you jump on and start to move those across the world. Okay. Um, there's a bunch more stuff to cover. Let's uh, go over one thing real quick. This is something we're gonna cover a little bit more in depth later. But once I have this set up, uh, I have my little cat guy and he can walk around. But let's say I didn't want my cat to be able to walk into the ocean. This is where I would need to some, create something called a collider. A collider is basically like a thing that tells us the shape of like where our cat is or where a certain object is in the screen. And then it can tell if we run into another collider. So the art that we see is just visual. The, the computer doesn't know if the art is overlapping with other art. It's only what it shows when, we, when we're rendering the scene. If we want to know if something is running into something else, we need to use a collider. So the collider is separate from the art. It usually looks similar to the art. Like when we created the collider for our player, it's very similar to the art. It's a little bit smaller than the art in this case. Um, sometimes you want it to be exactly the same. But it is what the computer or the game engine uses to determine if we're running into stuff in the, screen, in the scene. So to do that, it's really easy, uh, but we have to go back to our tile set. We have to do a couple of things, actually. First, we have to set up a physics layer. A physics layer is basically uh, where we do collisions. So collisions are sort of like in physics in the world, if two things run into each other, they can't occupy the same space. I think that's like a physical law or something. Uh, so we're going to add a new physics layer. And it's gonna give us some options for this. I'm gonna talk about this a lot more in depth next week, but basically in our game, we have these different layers that we put different objects on. So that way all of the objects in the game don't have to constantly be checking if they're running into each other because that would take a lot of time. Instead, we can use these different layers to say, the player only looks for these things and this thing, the tiles only look for the player or you know, maybe like uh, a, an enemy if the enemy runs into the tile or something like that. So for our collision layers, we haven't actually created any of these yet. Uh, we'll just create a couple right now. We'll put the player on the first layer. This is gonna save us a little bit of time because pretty much everything is always looking for layer number one unless we turn it off. Uh, and then let's make the second layer our tiles. Okay, so we want the tiles and the player to interact with each other. 
So we can select the collision layer for the tiles to be two. So it'll be the tiles. And then the collision mask is what we're looking for. So if I'm the tiles, my layer is number two, but I'm looking for anything that's on this collision mask. So right now I'm only looking for the player. I don't have to look for myself because I don't really care if I'm, if I'm running into myself. Obviously I'm in the same place as myself. So I'll leave the collision mask as the player. And that's basically how this works, but it'll get a little bit more complicated as we add more stuff into our project. Okay, so another thing I might do while I'm doing this is go to the player and say what's the player's uh, collisions, but I actually wanna do this in the, in the player scene. So I'll click on the little, I clicked on this little scene icon to go to my original player scene. And the player has a collision uh, area under the character body 2D area here. And you can see it has a layer and a mask. So it's on the player layer, that's good. We don't need to interact with ourselves, so we're gonna turn that off. And since the tile is looking for us, we don't have to look for the tile. So we're just gonna leave that off, just let the player kind of you know, worry about himself. So we'll go over this more again, but I'm just gonna save there and keep going. So let's go back to level one. So what I wanna do is add a collision to the, to the ocean uh, so that the player can't walk into the ocean. So I'm gonna click on my tile map again, go to tile set, and I have to go back to this tile set editor. And so now that I've created a physics layer for my tile set here, I can go to the paint section. This is a little confusing, but I go to the paint section, I go to physics layer zero, and then you can see the default physics layer is just like a, a blue cube, a blue square which basically means that it takes up the whole tile. And if I want to apply this collision to a tile, I just click on that tile. And if I wanna unapply it, I, uh, what do I do? I should right click, but it's not giving me the option. Okay, so I, I applied it a few times. Why won't it let me unapply it? Maybe I click and delete. Uh, I'm right clicking, I'm control clicking. I don't know, uh, I guess I can clear. I guess I have to clear this and then click to get rid of it. That kind of makes sense because they, they want to keep everything over here. Anyway, so if I want to bring that back, I'll go to reset the default tile shape and then click, click, click. Now I've each one of those guys has a collision on them, but my grass and my dirt don't. So now when I run the scene, the player is gonna run into the ocean or not. Uh, let's see. Let's save this real quick. Okay, so I have my collision layer. I have my collision mask. I am getting a million errors, but they're all just... Okay, I'm gonna comment out this for a second. I don't think this is what's giving me an issue, but just in case it is. Okay, now let's see what we missed. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, so we have our tile map, we have our physics layer, we have the right collision tiles, collision mask is player, and in our tile set, we have our physics layer zero, we have our tiles, uh, everything looks fine. Um, I'm gonna repaint the tiles just in case that's the issue. So I'm gonna select these and I'll just repaint these areas real quick. Okay. No. Okay. Um, is the issue the player collisions? Okay, I'll turn on the mask for the player. Let's see if that fixes something. It shouldn't matter, but... Okay, there we go. Okay, for some reason, I don't know why that... I didn't used to have to do that in the past, but that is fixing the issue. So now you can see when the player collider hits 
the ocean, the player can't keep going. And you can see the collider, the where, where you have the collider kind of matters because my player is like overlapping a little bit here. That's because if we look at the player collider, you can see that the collision shape stops here. So that allows the player's head to overlap a little bit with the edge. Depending on the art style you're going for, that might be good. If you want a little overlap, that's good. If you're doing like a fully top-down type game, you wouldn't want that because you would want more of a you know clean, uh, non-overlapping art. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be more complicated. You could do that. What you can do, and this will this will take too long to get into, but you can assign properties to the different parts of your um, tiles uh, to basically say like what type of tile they are. This is done with uh, navigation layers, or you could do custom data layers. Um, but basically, you would do the same thing, but instead of saying this is a collision, you would say like this is a special layer, and it would communicate that to the player, and then the player would start like swimming, maybe the speed gets knocked down. Um, so you can do that, but it's a little more complicated. Uh, I can find a, like a YouTube video that would go over that. Um, all right, I'm getting, I'm using a, a lot of time, so I'll try to go quickly through the last little bit, but uh, so yeah, the player does apparently have to mask for the tiles. Um, actually, you know, there's a new setting that I always forget about because it's new, but let me see. Uh, oh, you know what? Maybe that was the issue. I don't know. Um, okay, I don't see it on here. So... Uh, I'm not going to worry about it for right now. I'll look into it a little bit more. There's still a lot of new stuff with Godot 4 that I'm still getting used to. Um, but we've got that collision working now, so let's move on to our second layer. Um, so for our second layer, this is a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to drag my tile scenery over here, and I'm going to accept the atlas. And you can see that Godot is pretty good at figuring out where my tiles are. Um, but it doesn't really notice that, like, for example, this is, this is basically one big tile. So it thinks that, like, my tree is a, is a bunch of little tiles. So I'm going to go back to the setup section and make some changes here. Um, so what I can do is delete these tiles around this, like, big tree. So if I want to have, like, a big tile, what I want to do... First of all, I kind of mentioned this on Tuesday, but it's better to have three by three or three by one or one by three. But if I want this guy to be one big tile, uh, what I have to do is I think hold shift and then drag it like that. And this orange rectangle shows you where the tile gets added. So it doesn't actually take up the space of all the tiles. Um, it just gets added in the middle and it'll kind of cover stuff that's around it, uh, but it won't, it won't work exactly the same way as another tile. Um, so I have a couple more like that. Another way that I can do that, I can delete these tiles. And I can go over here to select and grab this tile. And it'll actually let me change the size of it. So I can click on this red button and drag it down. Um, like that. To make that an extra large tile. Um, another thing I can do, let's go over to our sign. I'm going to delete these. I'll just create one tile here. Then I can go to select, and I can actually just change the properties right here. See where it says Atlas coordinates? That's like where it is on the image. And then size, one by one, uh, is not what we want. We want three by three. And so now I have a three by three tile for that big sign. These guys are all one tile, so that's fine. Same with these guys. So now my, my Atlas is good to go. Um, if I want to add collisions to, to the scenery. I don't have to do this, but let's say, for example, I want my player to like not be able to walk through trees. I can go back here to my physics layer, and this is where this gets a little more complicated. So like, if I don't want my player to like not be able to walk through this whole area, but I might want them not to be able to walk through this area down here. 
And so what I can do is I can click on the tile to get the preview here, and then I can move these little dots around in the collision editor, and then I have to click on the tile again, and it applies the change. So the first click basically just moves this image in here, and then the next click applies this to the image itself. So let's say I want to do that with this tile. If I click here, the first click brings that guy in here. Uh, but then, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, the next click is just going to apply this. So let's say I just want this to be like down here. And then I apply it. So now I have a collision here. Uh, I might need to move this over. So now my player won't be able to walk through the base of the tree. Uh, so you could keep doing that with like the rocks and stuff. If I click on a rock, uh, let's move this up here. It's going to show me the rock. And then I have to click again to apply the collision. So this takes a little bit of getting used to. And there's other ways that you can, there's a lot of like key commands and stuff that you can use to make this a little bit more efficient. Um, but that's the basic idea here. Uh, so basically, I'll just want to go through, you know, for this rock, I could like move this over, move this over, do like that, and then apply. So I'm going to end up clicking on everything twice. And there's more sophisticated stuff you can do with this that I'm not going to cover. I'll probably cover it in a later lesson. Uh, but the collisions don't have to be perfect. They just have to be like close enough that my player is going to like run into these things. Um, I have some little rocks here. I'm not going to worry about those. And then I'm just going to say my player can walk through flowers. That's fine. Uh, let's just set up this one last tree. So I'll just drag this stuff down here. OK. OK, so I've got some collisions set up. And so I'm basically ready to go. So I'm going to go back to my tile map. Uh, and now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to change the layer first. If I take this tree and I paint it uh, here, oh, I got to select the paint first. See how it kind of, it does this like weird thing because I'm like putting it on the ground. That's not what I want. So I'm going to change the layer to scenery. And now I can put these trees around and it'll let me put as many as I want. Notice that since the tree the only tile that it actually takes up is the one in the very middle. So I can layer trees on top of each other. You might not want to do that, in which case you can just space the trees apart like this. And I can put as many trees as I want throughout my scene. Uh, then I can choose like a little tree and I can just like draw a whole bunch of little trees. That looks nice. Notice that the, the layer I'm not on is, is darker. It makes it easier to see what I'm working on. If I don't want that, I can click this button and now I can see both. Uh, so then if I want to put some rocks, remember we can randomize. So let's select a bunch of rocks. Let's turn on the dice and let's just put some rocks around here, something like that. Uh, I can do the same thing with my little rocks. I'm just going to select a few, keep random on. Maybe I'll put some rocks down here by the ocean, although I don't want them in the ocean. Something like that, maybe along here. Uh, and then I've got some flowers. I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to randomize. I'll put some flowers around here. That looks nice. Uh, obviously, I would spend more time making this look good if I had time, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so there we go. I've got like another big tree. I could put some down here. See, it overwrites some of them, but not all of them. Uh, let's put my big trees up here. That'll be, that'll be good. OK, so let's try the scene again. And so now my player can't go where these like trees are, although it kind of seems off. There might be an issue with that one because it's a bigger tile. But it can walk over these rocks, no problem. But it can't walk over these rocks. OK, so now I have some scenery. Of course, I can add way more layers, do lots of different stuff. There's a lot of sort of like flexibility here. Um, OK, there's two more things I want to cover. So I'm just going to go through that real quick. Uh, so the first thing, depending on what type of game you're making, you may or may not want something called Y sorting. Y sorting is basically deciding if something shows up on top of something else. Notice that my player is always on top of the tree. 
And that's because the player is sort is below the tile map in the scene hierarchy. So the player is always going to be on top of the tree, even if it kind of looks like when I'm up here, the tree should be on top of the player. If I if I have a certain type of game like a platformer or a top-down game, I probably don't want Y sorting. If I have a game that looks like what this looks like right now, where there's like layers and I'm looking at it from this kind of like slightly top-down perspective, but not fully top-down perspective, I probably do want Y sorting. So it kind of depends on your game. But if I want Y sorting, I have to make sure everything is doing Y sorting. So I have to go up to the main node and I have to go to visibility and I have to, or no, ordering, and I have to say Y sort. Then I have to go to my tile map. I have to go to ordering. I have to say Y sort. Then I have to go to my layers and turn on Y sort. Then I have to go to my player and turn on Y sort. So anything that's not Y sort enabled will not Y sort. So now if I, if I run this again, now the player goes behind the tree when the player is higher in the scene. Okay, so that's really all that Y sorting does is it sorts based on where you are in the scene. Oh, I can't go past these trees. Um, when you do that, one thing you'll notice like with this tree is that it kind of still looks like the player is covering up the tree when it shouldn't. And that is because when we design the player, we add them right in the middle of the canvas. So if you're doing Y sort, you also kind of need the player to be uh, up here. So you would want the player feet to be basically on the, the red line and then the collision to be on the red line or like somewhere around there. You can play around it with exactly what you want that to look like. So if I run that, oh, I'm running the player scene. I've got to run level one. Okay, so now the Y sort will look a little bit better. Although I have this weird collision, so it's not perfect, but like the flower now, see how the flower goes in front of the player like right at the right place because I have that calibrated correctly. So again, Y sort's not required. It's not what you need to have, but if you like that look, then you would probably want to enable that. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna cover doing a little bit of documentation. Um, I was gonna do like a video documentation, but I, I'm already taking up too much time. So I'm just gonna do some more images and we'll do video documentation next time. So remember, if I want to take an image of my game, the best way to do that is using the screenshot feature on the Mac. On the PC, you can use like the Xbox game bar or the snipping tool. I have a link uh, or I have a page on the OpenLab site that has like tutorials for all of those things. Um, but for my OpenLab post, of course, I want to post the sprites that I created, but I also want to show sprites that the scene that I'm starting to build. It doesn't have to be 100% done, but we want to see how they fit together. So I'm gonna run my scene. I'm gonna hit Command Shift 4. That brings up this like little target guy. Then I hit space and it turns it into a camera and I take a picture. And you know, if you have a big scene, this pretty much shows everything that I've got. But if you've got a lot of stuff going on, you might wanna move your cat somewhere else or your player and take a few more shots. You might wanna give more of a sense of stuff that's going on. Uh, if your scene is like zoomed in more, maybe you know you might want to take a few screenshots, but just take a couple sh screenshots to so show how stuff fits together. Uh, maybe we'll do a video next week. Um, but once I've got a couple screenshots, I'm ready to post my uh, project. So I'm gonna go to the open lab. My doc is not coming up. Let's go over here. All right, so oh, I have to log in. Okay, I'm gonna log in. I'm gonna create a new post. And let's make a new category. Uh, scenery. Or should we call it tile map? Whatever, we'll call it scenery. Okay, so my scenery. And so I'll say I made some uh, grass, dirt, and water textures for the ground uh, layer, and some trees, flowers, and rocks for the scenery 
layer. You know, just kind of describe what you worked on. And then let's add in our sprite sheet. So I'm just gonna do this quick. So I'm gonna go to the finder and uh, drag these guys in. So I'll just take both of these guys and drag them into WordPress. One thing I do wanna make sure is that I get that nice blue line. And if I put in two images at the same time, it does this weird thing called a gallery, which is fine, but I just wanna turn off crop images because that's gonna crop out some of the information that we wanna see. So now I have a gallery. And the nice thing about a gallery is I can, uh, or I, at least I thought I could add captions. Let's see. Yeah. So I could say uh, ground sprites and scenery sprites. And so then I can add my screenshots. So I'll go back to my finder. And when I take a screenshot, the default will go to the desktop. So there's my two screenshots. I'm gonna put these in my screenshot folder. So let's drag these over here. And for my sake, I'll rename these scenery one, scenery two. And then I'll uh, drag these in here. Uh, I accidentally put them on top, so let's make sure to go down here. So now I'll drag them there. And same thing, if I put two images in at the same time, it's gonna make a gallery. Gallery's fine. If I don't want the images to be next to each other because they're kind of larger, I can just turn the columns to one and they'll be on top of each other. So let's preview that real quick. That looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and publish. Remember to click publish twice. And once you've done that, remember you have to submit this link on Blackboard. So even if you've created the post, you still have to submit on Blackboard. So just copy this link and go over to Blackboard, find the assignments and do that thing. All right, sorry, I went a little bit longer than I meant to, but uh, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot more features, like we talked about the swimming in the water type thing. There is a lot of different stuff you can do with tile maps. And so I, I recommend ex if you have a specific thing that you want to do, try exploring that on your own. Or uh, if you can't find anything, let me know and I might be able to help point you in the right direction.